Hey guys, and welcome back to Should Have Turned Left. I'm Ben, uh, Canadianized on the forums, at the Canadianized on Twitter. I'm Frank, also known as Nazrik. I'm Miranda, also known as War Gamer Girl. And for your viewing pleasure, we have a 50-point game between Frank and Miranda. Uh, what'd you guys bring? Go ahead. I brought um, Epic Sorsha forward Commander Sorsha. She brought Silas, Beast09, a Grolar. She also had the Winter Guard Death Star with three Arcateers. Kovnik Joe, obviously, uh, Iris, Saxon Auric, um, the Mortar Crew, the Great Bears of Gallows Wood, Lady Ayana, Master Holt, and the Widowmakers. I played Rhett because everyone loves Rhett. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Got like three or Especially four different requests Frank. for it. Um, I played Adeptus Ron, a Phoenix, a Chimera, an Aspis. Then I had Halbs and UA with the Solus on them, two of the Battle Mittens, Battle Mages. Two of the Stormfall Archers, um, and then two of the Magisters, and two Arcanists. And as and for the fuel cache objective, oh yeah, it was and very the, objective. And the stockpile very objective. <laughs> <laughs> and for commentary, that is all you're going to hear about that game, because uh, instead we are going to talk about Mark Three or the new edition of War Machine and Hordes the whole time. So mute us if you don't like it. But Miranda's here, so he'll definitely listen. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? That's my live show has taught me that no, no, they won't. <laughs> they, they will not listen. <laughs> <laughs> I did in the background <laughs> once. How much can I get yelled once. at? Once. <laughs> um, All right, so where are we starting from? So we're we're just going to start off the comprehensive collection of Mark III spoilers on um, the main forums page because. I don't even want to say well, that guy's name I right mean, now. I uh, mean, just before, I think before we talk the actual spoilers, who was surprised by a Mark III in two months? I, I was. really was. Yeah, I mean, it was... I did not see that coming. It was a little sketchy that we hadn't seen rules for new ca- like uh, anything new in the upcoming books because based on their current life cycle, we would be expecting a book within the next two months pretty much because yeah. spring summer you would get the war machine book and uh, every release was um like templates or some sort of accessory they, they spoiled or... a caster for every faction which was also odd because yeah on the prime cast yeah, yeah. Norm- like normally you would stuff? yeah normally you would say okay here's the upcoming war machine stuff and then maybe you would say something about hordes later on not really War Machine and Hordes all at once. I thought it was pretty interesting, that little... Do you think that kind of, like, caught your attention and you suspected that it was? Or you just thought it was something else? I, I thought I thought what they were going to do was completely different than what they did. I thought they were going yeah. to announce that they were going to catch up on all releases and change their production line. Switch from the cheap Chinese crap that they've been pushing out <laughs> and move and say that they are either doing hard plastic for all new kits... Or they're going to continue to modernize the existing line. Like, they've modernized a lot of the uh, characters. Yeah. Um, we saw almost all the heavy kits get converted over. Not Gatorix, I'm so excited to see In the last few that. years. <laughs> and they've moved maybe all of the six-man units that could be ten-man units into just ten-man units. Yeah. Not selling blisters. So. And then including the weapon attachments if they come with it. Yeah. So uh, I, and unit attachments actually. I, I figured they were going to continue to do that because they have to. You've got to like shrink what you're selling. Yeah. So having oh kits, yeah you do having the having kits not having blisters anymore things like that. So I thought that's what they were going to do, but Mark Three was a bit of a shocker. I thought. Yeah. I, no, I expected a Mark Two Point Five or remix or something because the Errata has gotten so big and all that stuff. And but. also there were of course models that are not released currently yeah. and will not even be released by the time that the I new know. rule set comes. So it's like... Hey, Crix players. Inflictor, 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 <laughs> oh, inflictor, oh, inflictor. You know, Reset guys, that clock. You know, they were they were planning Mark III from the beginning. Oh, I, I'm sure. Yeah. They, were, they were planning Mark III, so... So that's why second round gargantuans are bad. Well, Aww. well, they, they did say, hey, trolls, here's a gargantuan that's better than uh, Mountain King. True. Here's a caster that might be powerful if you had some better releases, so it could be <laughs> really powerful in the future and have some puppet strings. And they're like, no, we're changing the real set, man. <laughs> wow. We're kidding. 
Well, yeah. wait, and and it's probably needed. I even pointed out in the in the prime cast that with the huge base models, it kept cha- it made such an impact on the game and how you played. It affected terrain and it just it kept not working out really well. People didn't yeah. like bringing them because it would clog things up or they were too they, high priority they targets. Good enough. Right. And no, and in, in th- they cases, even admitted, I and mean, they said Colossals, Gargantuans, and Battle Engines, that Which they were happy just to much yeah. too conservative with the rules for them. And so, I don't know. Battle Engine casters, what do you think is going to happen there? Uh, I don't know. I don't have one. <laughs> that was, yeah, that's, that's kind of... Right. Speculating on what they're going to change with all these <laughs> models. Oh, my gosh. I, I wonder oh. with the change in the lore, because they were talking about not having or what everyone calls plot armor or script armor or whatever anymore, if you're going to see any casters go beyond a third iteration. Well, I think what they were really saying is it's jumped two years, so you're going to find out some people have died. Oh, just like years. already? Yeah. Oh. yeah. But they yeah, said that they're going to progress that storyline a bit. So I think it will be interesting to see maybe some casters retired. I mean, that could be fun. But yeah. I don't think they're going to retire any models. But if you are going to retire anything in this game, it would have to be war casters. Because well, it's one of the lowest uh, monetary investments that we have. Yeah. yeah. Well, I mean, they, they, have, they have said that they're not going to invalidate any purchases. Like, they... Um, Simon's come out and said multiple times in multiple threads that no, you're still going to be able to play with all your models. Um, so even if they kill a character in the fluff, that means that that means you're still going to be well, able to play them on the table. And I think that's part of why they're actually removing the fluff from the rule books. Well, also there was always the case that you could always play the first and second iteration of a caster, right? Exactly, because. When you're playing your game, it's at any point in time in the storyline was always their thing. That That's the way they even got, and the way they got around if you're facing against someone that has the same caster as you. It's like one's an imposter. One's an imposter, exactly. Yeah, I yeah. yeah they already justify yeah. it. So, so there's no... So that no... explains why Eris 1 works in Kruger 2's no court of thing exactly. for. <laughs> it's an imposter. Yeah. Yeah, and, and there's obviously a third iteration by now, and yet the first iteration still walking around doing things. I know, right? Um, so you want to talk about some of the actual things that they, they told us? Because everything else is sort of speculation. It is. Um, we have some hard facts. We do. So double the point scale of the game. That's good. I think that's pretty much needed. I, yeah, I guess I think, the two yeah. and three point solos were really where you saw a lot of that I think, become an yeah. issue. I think uh, you really saw it in the... You had units that were falling in this 8 to 10 point range, which is really difficult to balance them in. Heavies mm-hmm. is also another place where I think you saw some heavies that you're like, why would I ever pay 9 points for this heavy? If it was yeah. 8 points, maybe. And yeah, as you say, the solos were well, I mean, probably some of the being, bigger inf- bigger offenders. Yeah, well, it's like at the same time, being a circle player, it's like, all right, at 9 points, I have the Riphorn Seder, I have the Feral Warp Wolf, I have the Pure Blood Warp Wolf. Um, I have a stalker for one more point. I have reach and an animus that I use all the freaking time. Yeah. I can afford that one point. And we, we have a few point cost examples that we can go off of here. Yeah. Um, Reckoners. Uh, well, I mean, for the new point cost, just to, give, oh, yes. just to give an idea how different that choice is going to be. So there's in the Kador battle box, it comes with a juggernaut and also a demolisher. Right. Uh, I believe it's a demolisher in the new Kador yeah, battle yeah. box. Yeah. So should know. <laughs> is the one Jack I don't actually have already. Previous what? the one, yeah. <laughs> He's even a multi kit. I know, but well, I, hey, I good excuse a lot for of you metal. to get the battle box. I then. happen to have exactly. a multi kit that is magnetized. Ugh, in case no. you're interested, I'm actually not a fan of magnetization <laughs> or well, pinning. You can, you can glue it together; it's fine. <laughs> what? So do you green stuff? No, like I use that's true. Does. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's I have okay, used Tommy. We're sticking up for you. <laughs> I have used JB Weld, but yes, there are far, far more talented people to put together my models. But I, I guess for the the instance of this, you have a, a juggernaut, which has been determined to be twelve points. Okay. Uh, yeah. And you have battle group points, which are twenty eight to thirty. So that means that your demolisher is falling into a sixteen to eighteen point. Uh, range, which is a little interesting, and if you just take that as a rough example, that's a huge difference between do I want to take a twelve point jack that's pretty much just melee, mm-hmm. or take mm-hmm. a sixteen to eighteen point jack 
that's melee and range. I mean, we don't really know what their melee and range is going to be, but he does have a gun and he does have a chainsaw arm. So yeah, I think that's a huge difference between here's a seven point and a nine point. Like two points, not a big deal. Four points could be a much bigger deal, though. No, and, and I guess in either case, you said they were rounding down the points by or knocking it uh, off by one, then doubling it. Well, because the juggernaut's no, normally sometimes. what seven. So, yeah, so juggernaut's normally seven. So he, I actually, they are going to be fourteen. I actually, have that written down because the example given in the prime cast of um, yeah, conquest being they, roughly four times more expensive, and they, they had souls going on that. saying no, Three it's actually eight, eight, eight three, 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 yeah. three. Which, yeah, yeah. So, Juggernaut is 12 points, uh, currently, or 7 points in our current system, so he went down. Um, the Conquest is currently 19. And he's up but, to a 37, so yeah. we see that's not quite doubled. But 7 to 9 points for a Conquest where previously you were paying 13 minimum in Kador. Right, and right. it was such a big yeah. investment. Huge investment. Yeah. And they said that the game size is going to be 75 points? Uh, yeah, 75, 75 is the new 50. 50 is the new 35. Yeah. Which, I mean, if you think about that in a war machine fashion where you're only going to take the one jack or you're only going to fail your battle group points, just take your colossal or whatever, that's a crap ton that's, of infantry. That is. I mean, you are, it's roughly you are playing point a 105 us. point list ish, so cut that in half. Yeah, you're pretty close to what we're playing now, maybe a tiny, tiny bit less. Yeah, I, I guess it'll depend on. If your faction, if they're on the lower end of the point cost spectrum, like we should expect some factions to be on the low end of the point cost spectrum. Yeah. That would be Kador Crix uh, primarily. Yeah. They're going to be on the lower end. Um, and some will be on the higher end. I think the best example of that will be Legion Circle. They are almost required to be on the higher end of the point cost spectrum. So. No, oh, agreed. Battle boxes. Battle boxes. Every single one of them, zero points. I like that. And it even comes with a mat and specific scenario? Yep, for uh, game? two foot by two foot mat to play on, and it will have a specific scenario to help teach people how to play the game, but we don't know anything more about that scenario right now. I think that's good that it has a scenario. Yeah, and it comes with dice, it comes with a crappy plastic ruler, but yeah. it has a ruler. Well, I mean, it's a whole, it's a whole kit. It, it is. And it's forty dollars. Um, oh, the other thing I actually really like about it is it is the PVC plastic, so it's the same resin that they've been using before. Right. But it actually is colored. Right. They actually did go in and dye it, and the reason being, it's easier for new players to identify which models are theirs and which are their opponents. Are you serious? They actually dyed yeah, them? they actually so dyed the it. So that the blue ones are blue on the troll, or the yes, uh, the they are. are they are actually, actually blue. blue. That's pretty the cool. The circles actually. are actually green. Yeah. Like, I mean, it might suck for the people that are hardcore painters. And However, there is no Convergence Battle Box. This there's is true. There's what, nine? Cock totally cock oh. there, There's nine. There's the big four, and then they Rhett's a big red faction. Yep. So they give them a battle box. They've been around. They were the, the they're the oldest new person. They were the, the, they were the <laughs> they were two the, factions. Exactly. So. Yeah. Um, as far as the battle boxes, I think there are a few interesting things to point out. Kador still has two heavies because there's no way you would get a light magically. So. Fair enough. And that not... would be giving too much away. And even with a 12-point juggernaut, you couldn't fit uh, two heavies and a light. So they are incredibly oh, yeah. low on the point spectrum. The only battle box that had a duplicate jack or beast is Legion with the two shredders. Two shredders. Everything which, else is unique. Yeah. Oh, they're the tiny ones, right? Yeah, so yeah, the I think that's far better than including four shredders in the battle box. Agreed. Because you never used your four shredders unless you're playing that weird Dagrosh 2 shredder spam. Yeah. Um, um, circle, they uh, got a pure, yeah, it's pure a blood. Pure blood, regular Argus, and Gorax. So that's an upgrade, right? Gorax. Yeah. Well, it depends on how bad the nerf bat hits that. Yeah, it, it depends on how the models change, I guess. But at least you don't have a duplicate war beast in there. Exactly. Because that sucks. And that brings yeah. us to trolls, which also used to have a duplicate war beast. But now you get three unique war beasts from the higher end of the point <laughs> cost spectrum yeah. for whatever reason. Who knows why? <laughs> yeah. Um, and you have a crap ton of light. So I guess they just want to say, hey, look at all these light war beasts. Oh, wait, what do you but do with this tough. faction? <laughs> but tough. So I, I still a thing. I don't know. That might I think they could have done better with the troll one. But um, yeah, they you don't want to just give a new player a heavy and a light and put them up against people at their battle boxes and everyone else has a heavy and two lights or 
you know, two heavies and a light. Two so apparently heavies, three whatever. lights is okay. Apparently three lights is okay. At least you have four <laughs> models, I guess. Well, I was going to yeah. say, it's, uh, for hordes, it's a lot of the Animus use, right? I mean, do they have? Yeah. Okay. yeah. So, well, currently they, they all have different and yeah, useful yeah. I mean, animi, and so yeah. you would hope that they continue to have that. And each one is a little different, so Axer is more offensive. But I think battle boxes will be a nice change. Forty dollars is definitely good. Yeah, ten bucks cheaper than they have. Each one with has more a new stuff in it. Yeah, each yeah. one has a new caster that's sort of designed to actually play at the smaller point level. So you don't have yep. someone like Madrak who's like, my feet does nothing because you brought no warrior models. Uh huh. Um, can you guys think of any of the other ones that were really bad at the battle box level? Some of them were uh, broken, like Sorcerer play- One and P. Denny. Like they were. I Sorcer don't see one, anything Kriash wrong one. with the Kador original um, battle box, for the record. <laughs> Denny was broken, though. That was ridiculous. That was, that was yeah. a negative play experience. Even with the two players. <laughs> oh my gosh. <laughs> <laughs> we'll get, That'll we'll be get a common thing. <laughs> <laughs> Even with the two player starter box, like they would put in like, yeah. like uh, well, Zero Raiders. Well, pop and drop troopers. versus freeze and drop. But you got shock troopers on one. I mean, you got incinerators well, on the other. So. Yeah, no, I mean, yeah. it was cripple fight. <laughs> <laughs> Miranda's like, hey, I love my shock troopers. I do. Reach. I do love my shock Maybe troopers, and I'm the hoping that they get some love. I hope that they have listened to years and years and years of crying on the <laughs> forums that have said, "When <laughs> troll when? and Kator players are still going to be crying." They're like, "What uh-huh. game would this be?" Well, if at least we didn't give us have... something different. I don't know. No, I I am hopeful. I am very hopeful about this new edition. In all in all fairness, like, and I think most people are. There's some parts where there's wailing and gnashing of teeth, but overall, this has been very well received. Yeah. So yeah. where do you want to drive that? Because there's some points oh, of contention so that you could hit, or we could hit the well, high points. Well, we're still on battle boxes and stuff like that. So let's go over the new Jack and Beast mechanics. Yeah, that, that's theory. actually a good one. Uh, power up and spirit bond. Is it enough? Spirit Bond, I mean, you can always read Oh my god, movie. I am so happy for Spirit Bond. Yeah, just for your end spirit, for your late game. Spirit yes. Bond makes it so that if you're playing an attrition faction, you're you're not punished for playing hordes. Yeah. So if you're in hordes and you're playing the attrition playstyle, you're no longer punished for actually using your beast for peace traits. So for well, a lot of... You are a little bit because you only get one as yeah, opposed to what you can You only get for, one, but... but Oh, it's better than so nothing. much better, so much better. And how many times have we seen? Okay, the Horde's Warlock has it's a failed assassination. They have two or three boxes left. They have no fury. So I cut for two, and I can't cast any. Oh, balls. oh and it also doing yeah. I, I think the the beast heavy factions, which would be uh, Legion Circle, if it were beast heavy, you're bringing four to five. And oh, okay, yeah. li- lights, yeah. legions always close to five, five four yep. or five normally. Um, so their casters definitely won't get punished, which is great since they're yeah. usually spell slingers. And yeah. hooray, the spawning vessel. Now spirit bond does not does work, not with work for that. Fuck so, your lessers. <laughs> yep. So the spawning vessel is not going to get a stealth buff with that. The thing that I think will be interesting is it could actually make the lesser warlocks maybe more playable, you know, except for the Legion one because yeah. fuck them. <laughs> the Beast Misters? Yeah. Oh, yeah, only lessers. <laughs> yeah. yeah, exactly. So if you can actually uh, get something after, because if you're taking a lesser warlock, you're taking beasts that are going to get up there and do something. They're going to die, and then your lesser is yep. sort of useless at that point. Yeah. So at least your lesser... Uh, Warlock can still do something, which that could be a great change for them if it affects them. My argument that I don't think too many people think of is you can't transfer to a dead war beast. Yeah. I don't know where some people get that. They just don't read, comprehend, yeah. listen, something like that. From the from the War Machine yeah. side go, of it. Go War Machine. Yes. Now. Ben and I don't play that stupid no. game. What's War Machine? <laughs> <laughs> Troop Machine. They're trying to make it not Troop Machine. Yeah. Well, and that would be nice because I don't know how many people got into playing War Machine to play the big heavy beasts or to play big robots. And, and this hopefully is the opportunity to really do that with whatever faction you pick. You don't yeah. just have to oh, play yeah. Minoth. Not just Minoth oh, yeah. or Convergence. Um, a question for you since you have a lot of it in the faction. What do you think about still having the heavy boiler rule or the aggressive rule, the well, ones that give you right? the free run I mean, charge yeah, so, on top of power up. 
Well, so power up's just a free focus, and you can use that for a lot of things. Aggressive and um, and heavy boiler don't necessarily mean you can always charge or slam or do power attacks and things yeah. like that. So the power up is still going to be helpful. Do you think they should regard. have those rules still exist if you're always getting a free focus? Would you like to see something different or better on on those models always, that have that? Just if you could give all the Kador Award Jacks like aggressive, that's cool. And then the free focus can just go to boosting their terrible, terrible. Yeah, I mean abilities. that could that could be one thing. Is <laughs> it, it's like, well, I always had free front charge anyway, so this focus is just kind of doing whatever. Well, it's about early on, but then later it, it could be much more beneficial, especially if you're a shooting jack in Kador. Oh, you yeah. only really need the one focus. Uh, usually, for yeah, I mean, unless Depending you have multiple rate of fire, yeah. like Harkovich, you only ever assign one focus to Black Ivan because bonds do so much. And I'd yeah. be really yep. curious to see how they change the Warcasters to affect their battle groups because that will make the focus mean more or less, or d it might overlap differently with the uh, Warjack's innate abilities. So, I mean, again, Harkovich with just Black Ivan, you get boosts and. I'd like to see that with just like more field marshal abilities. They really explored that with convergence, mm. and I think that'd be really cool and to see. And I across think the we board. will see a lot more field marshals. Actually, Harkovich yeah. was actually the, one first, the first one, one to one. have the field marshal, which is yeah. Pathfinder, yep. which was decent. Uh, but you'll see more unique abilities like that. I think for a lot of casters in the War Machine side, unfortunately, they're just going to get those field marshals, which would be a little sad, but you could have some good ones, like Shield Guard's a great one. Pathfinder, even though it seems a little lame, Pathfinder is actually awesome. Oh to have. my gosh! Now Pathfinder you can charge so over good. a wall. Pathfinder yeah. is really good. Arc Node is an incredibly powerful yeah, one, Arc and think about BS. how that even changes your whole play style, especially for something like Kator. Uh, yeah, yeah. Zerkova just says oh, field marshal for Arc Node. Yeah. Okay. Right? Yes. I mean, Old Witch could be another one. So that's like the I won with Zerkova Club isn't going to mean near the same. No, thing No, no. I think that Who I knows? think that's just going to be a disbanded group. <laughs> Uh, maybe. I mean, and I'm sure right off when this releases, you're going to see immediate reaction of like, this is the best one. This is horrible. And then like, it'll even out. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So you're not going to get like a, a really fair, comprehensive understanding of it until a few months in. Um, but if they do it where each war caster has a really genuinely unique effect beyond their feet yeah. in the game. Not it. So. Well, actually, we should, drop, we should drop this uh, subject and come back to it later. Yeah. yeah. We have power up. I think the elephant in the room with power up is Virus Two and uh, what's oh well, um, Virus Amon. Two Amanad Raza. Yeah. Uh, you can run them all normally. I think for factions like Kador, it'll make it'll make it like Kador is always one of fury efficiency. Like I play Kador as well, but uh, not since Miranda started playing a lot. So yeah, I, I just apparently the, I bullied you out. Yeah, or I threw the faction in the dumpster. <laughs> You're oh, also the only one in town who plays with the uh, Doom Reavers, which I won't touch. Yeah. yeah. Allocation will be defined purely as what the Warcaster gives its jacks during the control phase. Right. Everything else is just gaining. Everything else is gaining. Yeah. So, which is a good simplification. Yeah. So, Kalis's Force Wall Arcanists are going to apparently be a much more normal thing. Well, and I should hope so, because the idea even behind like, Jack Marshals or Colden Lord is being able to put a focus on, it was it was only really good for getting someone to do a shot or to run. Like, you didn't really yeah. utilize your Jack with just that ability. Yeah. Now, that being said, even though everything is gain outside of allocation, there is still a firm focus cap on three mm -hmm. for virtually every... Yeah, which means there will be some exceptions. Currently, yes. there are two exceptions to the rule that I can think of. Oh, four, three. Well, yeah. Three. There would be Behemoth, which is kind of awkward. The but you could, you yeah. could say it's more. Um, uh, Avatar. Avatar, yeah, Death Jack, Jack. And then, of course, you always had the Spirit Bond, which... Yeah, any. Or was it called Spirit Bond or what was Just bonding. Just bond, okay. Yeah, yeah bond, bond allows you to allocate. Have a fourth focus, yeah. yeah. Which I imagine they would maybe keep. I don't know. It's kind of... Nah, they probably will. I'm it, sure they're going to do something role. with bonding just to keep for fluff. And it, it, I think if, it's a great If they're role still to have incorporating a lot of their fluff into how they make their rules, then it would make sense to keep yeah. it because you know Black Ivan is with Harkovich and Beast oh, Nine is amazing with Sorsha, and I want him to continue to be amazing <laughs> with Sorsha. Oh my gosh, that was hilarious! Um, Painting with my mouth, John reactions to Mark Three or whatever. He he ended up asking a question. All right, since the plot armor's gone, who do you want to see die? And everybody. 
everybody in the chat just Haley, 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 Haley. Remember when uh, Eris was hated more than almost any character? Pretty soon there, know, there right? became someone that could overtake that. And she has a hooker pole. <laughs> she yeah. is arguably one of the most powerful characters in all of the Iron Kingdoms. What she really needs to do is ascend. Yeah, just go to You know, if you're not just Godhood. all hell-bent on her dying, you crazy people. Yeah. Okay, so. <laughs> I'm not plucky uh, now. Good lord, we've been talking about power up for a while. Do we want to go over the um, convergence and monstrosity thing yeah, quickly? We can hit those quickly. Just okay. fuck those factions. Yeah. <laughs> quickly. Convergence, induction. Works all the time. No limit to it anymore. Yeah, so Remember you can, your cap of three. You have a cap of three. You can induct all three focus, so that makes you incredibly efficient. Yep. Monstrosities. They gain a focus from continuous or any damage from continuous effects or damage from attacks, whether they be from friendly or enemy. Just yeah. always maintain it. Uh, so my thought, uh, what it siphon that has that has the oh, spell okay. psychosurgery. Yeah. He'll be three some, plus one. Some stuff looks so faster than that, cares about. That spell carries over. Oh, good lord! Those are super efficient monstrosities. Uh, what I would like to see with the monster, I mean, they're that if it had shit. an overboosting effect or yeah. if it had yeah. a defense, because their their defense is very bad. But yeah, their armor like is really bad. Right? They just have a grade, lot of boxes. boxes. Yeah. Yeah. So if they were cheap. to if they were to gain armor as you're damaging them, I think that would be <laughs> pretty fun, pretty cool, and it would give Merc players something to be happy about. Hail Hydra! So all psychology effects are gone. Great Yay. Um, four four icons immediately eliminated. Terror, Abomination, Fearless, and Commander. Yep. Commander's the one everyone forgets about, I think. But yeah. Down with Commander, which is great, because Commander was kind of a awkward rule. It really was. Like, give I, someone else your command stat. Especially when you're doing modifiers, like when something's out of formation at minus two, or Primal Howl from... <laughs> yeah, I was going to say, two, like, you have weird spells. And the way the Commander rules were... Uh, it's, it's kind of nice. This to also see that eliminates go away. a lot of stuff in the rule book. Yeah, it does. So I wonder if they're still going to have some form of out of formation penalty, because oh. if you're if you're undead or quote unquote fearless, there isn't really a penalty for it. Uh, well, you can't attack the following yeah. turn. You can't be targeted by friendly um, upkeeps or like can't be targeted. Yeah, that, or I mean, that was a stuff like that. Of change, so. Yeah, yeah, I. I'm so sure they'll probably stick over. with that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, just because they don't that, that want is, you gaming it like that. Yeah, that is a pretty significant effect, in my opinion, when it does happen. So, I don't know. I think it'd be okay with just that. I'm I'm happy that all these things are kind of going away because yeah. <clears throat> you had that weird situation with bomb checker. If you played with a bombs, it was kind of a nightmare in deployment oh, gosh, and everything. I know, right? Easily win a game just by one die roll. Yeah. Yep. Hey, Amazing. that model swing. Hey, you know what? We can actually watch one of those on Miranda's channel. Which one? Yeah, one a fleeing rune shaper. Totally oh, made my yeah. day. That 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 <laughs> fucked my entire game yeah. plan. So yeah. Yeah. It was it was yeah, it failed three times. It was Would, constantly constantly in the way. Yeah, I mean Would that's you say a that huge... was a, a negative play experience? <laughs> It was definitely a negative play experience. <laughs> so I'm glad they're getting rid of that so that um, I can have more positive play experiences. There you go. Which is few and far between. <laughs> so there were a lot of and all, you son of a bitch. Psychology rules were a very tilting effect, and they were yes. so binary. E at least two uh, with and your whole unit. And it's yeah, just... You, you it's, could be losing anywhere from... Do much know, about. And, and then with fleeing, you can't move them where you want them to move. Now, they didn't necessarily have to take psychology out altogether. You could have done something like pinning, but then taking it out is a perfectly acceptable simplification. Yeah. Um, I think however, just with for that, the amount of rules it kills, it was good. Agreed. Now, standard bearers still have a purpose in this game. Uh, we've we've plus two today, command is what we've what we've learned from the new chain. Or yeah. The, and furtherly expounded as yes, this actually does mean plus two formation if the standard bearer is within five inches of its unit's commander. So that's similar to the instep rule, in except instead of three inches, it's now two inches, which yep. uh, that's fine. But Having a larger it's command. It's on a dude with good. a flag, so yeah. that's everywhere. Um, and then the other thing are musicians. Which is great. I mean, few people, I guess, realize that musicians exist in the game because yeah. I, I put this forward to a few people and I'm like, we need musicians. And uh, if you've got a drum, a horn, or a, a banjo, it's a bagpipe. That's what it was. But it's a bagpipe. Eh. 
Uh, so Trolls and Legion, I think, might be the only ones that have it. I couldn't think of anyone yeah, else. Yeah, in the forum thread, those were the only... They um, used to give you the in-step rule, which gave you a huge command area, which was a huge benefit for both the Striders and the Finblades. Also oh, yeah. the Krill Warriors. Krill Warriors benefited from it quite a bit. But now you essentially get reform. It's called reposition, though. Reposition, yep. So will you maintain the reform rule? Are they going to be two separate rules? That would uh, be a dumb thing. Or are they're they just going to recall simplify. all of it to reposition? They should, yeah. yeah. Right. You would, it would ideally everything's reposition because in Mark 1 to Mark 2, they try to say, this does the same thing. Let's yeah. name them the same thing. Yeah, it's like, hey, we have 18 different versions of Pathfinder. We're just going to make it one thing. That could be kind of cool, though, because there are some UAs currently that give reform, right? Yep. Halberdiers. Uh, Nuala. Nuala. So it would be no different than them, really. Right, yeah. they would just be giving the reposition rule, yep. just like just like some of the other uh, more powerful UAs. So mm. I think that's a great change, and it's cool that they spoiled some granular detail, which I know Mr. Souls was not willing to do. Mr. Souls, that's funny. <laughs> <laughs> I know, right? Some people know him as Jason Souls, and some people got in many fights with him going into Mark One and Mark Two. <laughs> but he's back on the he's forums. Back. Welcome back, Jason. <laughs> Yeah. Um, also, one last quote: They did not weaponize any flags that were not already weaponized. So blunderbuss on the Kador banner. Yay! Hopefully, and, it stays. Uh, they didn't say it, it anything is about. Stay. Okay, yeah, good. it is okay, good. Good. I mean, when you've already modeled a like a character like that, or some, that's true. Some they already figure, have their plastic kit, so you can't really change it at that point. <laughs> Chop that gun off. That gun doesn't have any ammo for whatever reason. No, the, the, it, just, it makes sense the, in the lore, though. Why would Kador send somebody out there who couldn't fight? That would I mean, be, that holding, would be a waste. holding a flag and shooting, that's a hell of a talent because, <laughs> I, I mean, know. the scattergunners can't manage that. Well, you know, maybe you should consider changing factions. Again. I am, actually. <laughs> <laughs> why, why is that, Frank? Oh, well, you know, new edition, new time. And when I've played Trolls for like five, five or six years since, Mark, since the release of Mark II. Since the Horde's release of Mark II, I've been playing Trolls. Well, you're hearing it now. Trollblood Scrum is no longer having the rock of their podcast. Uh, they they said that they're going to try and rope me into it somehow. <laughs> but, uh, oh, that, that should be interesting. <laughs> Who knows? Who knows? Um, hey, speaking of negative play experiences, page five is dead. Uh, well, that's that not at all surprising. <laughs> that means you can't be a dick anymore, Ben. So how are you gonna how are you going to handle that? I'll still find a way. <laughs> I've never actually heard anyone quote the page five thing. Here, I've here. At no, least. not here. I did it once oh at my Feast of Blades a of couple years ago. Of course you did. You fucking did. <laughs> You're the reason why it got taken off. <laughs> Ben's like page five, bitch, man up. No, Come it was on. it was a two player game. Or uh, sorry, two v two game. Um, my partner and I, we actually looked at each other and went. This is stupid. Let's do it. Found out Balder is probably the most retarded actually uh, troll support caster ever. You, you know, I, I think I think the actual reason for getting rid of page five because I just remember the quote from it. Miranda, how do you feel about a game company telling you to play like you have a pair? It didn't actually bother me at all, but apparently it okay, bothered a lot well, of other people. It may yeah. it may have bothered some people. These are some very uh, PC hippies coming oh. out of the Seattle can't, area, can't, so yeah, can't can't even go near the territory of Age of Sigmar. So <laughs> yeah, I, I think that's fine, but I, it maybe it does have a sort of negative connotation if you're telling people to play like they have a pair and you want to be inclusive to everyone, yeah. even hey. if they don't have a pair. Pair of what? Yeah, well, I it, guess you can. Say I mean, pair of what. you can you can define it however you really want. It's just just making that statement, I guess, was upsetting enough to people, and it's it's a kind of a stupid sounding statement anyway. So yeah, it's just it fine is. to get rid of it. Uh, yeah, it also kind of gave people a license to be a dick, I guess. I've never really seen yeah, it outside of Ben, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I don't think it was Page Five that taught Ben that. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, wow. not at all, not at all. Wow. <laughs> you invited me here. <laughs> <laughs> this is true. <laughs> hey. Anyway, what else so, have we got, Ben? <laughs> speaking of big dick meta guy, now we'll go to pre-measuring. <laughs> <laughs> okay, pre-measuring. So I guess it's one of the more um, sticking points of this new... Well, what What is your 
interpretation of pre-measuring, Miranda? How do you interpret that? Oh, God. What can you do with pre-measuring? How would that affect your current, like the way you play a game right now? Okay, well, I mean, you would just be, theoretically, you would never make a move without knowing if you could con- successfully complete a charge, that's complete way, a shot. Yeah. I yeah. mean, and, and yeah, I mean, that's so pretty that simply just that. measuring point A to point B or making sure your base can fit with proxy bases or... Well, pre-measuring, I guess just from knowing it from other games is always meant. You're using your tape measure to measure from point A to point B. Yeah, you check if you can yeah. complete an action before actually committing to it. Right. And and so this is the first of, this is the first game I've really had where you deal with proxy bases. And I mean I think proxy bases will continue to exist in the game, and that's because of uh, certain models are lanes. Just, yeah, and, yeah, models being obnoxious. Like I was gonna say Sarah modeling. <laughs> oh, God, um, but that's the way I interpreted it, and then the way that um, I after I thought about it, and the way I discussed with Ben, it was, I guess a bit more disheartening to hear and that's when we get into this game of so you've got winter guard they have iron flesh on them they can advance and shoot with the 13 inch threat right Right. yep i want my models to be 13 and a half inches away from you can i pre-measure that yeah you could yeah so then we get into that game granted we do that already um to a point to a point we don't know the exact limit and no, the games that Ben and I play, and we with almost know. Yeah, and... the, the games that Ben and I play, we almost know the exact, and we dance around threat ranges. Yeah. But you also have those moments of failing it by a which hair, is, yeah. which well, is yeah, good. Threat range yeah. baiting. Which that that's exactly am, how oh Ben and I played our games. Is it's can you tell it on to me? Am I in? Can am you get mold this turn? Uh, no. Well, and it's a, it's an aspect of gameplay, right? I mean, it does teach you. Uh, I think it was kind of a non-linear way of thinking. I think it was a way to play the game, and Ben and I had fun doing that. That yeah. that's really not a fun way to play it. <laughs> no, it's now uh, it's just uh, like side, I'm outside like, of your threat range. Now you don't have to debate for ten minutes whether or not I'm in or out. Right? Yeah. So yeah, and that definitely better. makes sense when they're pushing like death clock and and keeping yeah. you on a timer mm-hmm. because. Uh, I know there's also the idea of imprecise measurements of, you know, you move your model over here and maybe something got messed up and you kind of try to reset it and it's it's never quite exact. And so you don't know. Um, and so it can make so sense in those measure regard. beforehand and then you hopefully know at that point. Because right. there is this kind of weird where you're, if you're trying to be a real dick with the rules, you want to make sure that they are 100% committed to that charge or move or whatever before before anything yeah. is laid out, whether you're in out or anything like that. So if you're really pushing the dick maneuver to make sure that they commit everything so you can get your free strikes or your failed charges or whatever it may be, you can really eat up a lot of time and just have a negative play experience. <laughs> well, and, and War Machine is the type of game that has such a precise rule set that you can, and you will mm-hmm. be right or, or completely wrong, but there's always an answer to it. So um, it does, um, I don't know. The, there's always the worry about, like, like Frank was saying, you just stay out of somebody's range because you know what their model can do. And the only way I can see that really being made up for um, are either adding a lot more movement shenanigans to your factions or having really tight scenarios that don't allow it, well, in which case you scenario, have a scrum in the middle again. Yeah, I think scenario scenarios could and, fix it to an extent. Well, And ultimately, let's go to we know what every model's threat range is already. Um, those of us that have been playing for a while, like all three of us are fairly experienced. Um, we know what general threat ranges are and we're generally pretty good with eyeballing certain distances. Especially yet, when you have zones and control areas. Yeah. yeah. Oh, God. I mean, those things make Flags, it. which you've seen Friggin', or heard us talk about. Yeah. You can hear Frank and I talk about how much we abuse the four inches off flags or objectives to pre-measure all kinds of crap anyways. Um, but... Okay, we know the threat ranges. We know all that stuff. We don't see that type of play really happening now without pre-measuring. It's, okay, your threat range is this. I can go this far. Um, famous example for me is Satixis Raiders with Desperate Pace charging. It's like, okay, we start 19 inches apart. I can advance 5 inches. And as long as I don't... As yeah. long as I do a millimeter under 5 inches, you can't actually charge me. Yeah. Um, we know stuff like this already, yet we still go into the risk reward of 
screw it. I'm just going to have this wave up here. I'm going to have this wave to counterattack, and I'm going to... I mean, you yeah. still you, layer, and you layering. still do all the health. Or, still be anyways. Anyways. or you can even play like the other opponent, knowing all those measurements and assuming that you did measure and deploy 10 inches up yeah, instead of nine and a half inches up to yeah, just throw that, your... There's say, a whole yeah, sub-game to it because is, it is uh, non-linear. It's abstract thinking. With, with pre-measure, you do get rid of the dick move of I deployed an inch back or something <laughs> like that. Uh-huh. Which, I mean, that was a lot of fun. But <laughs> well, it's... Yeah. There goes all of our fun. There goes all of our positive play experiences. <laughs> wow. All right. Hey, okay. only time I deployed an inch back is... Can you actually hit something? If you're playing, uh, no. if you're playing against Lilith two and you want a stomper, <laughs> that's exactly what you do. <laughs> yep. So it goes back to the risk reward. Is that a fun element for you to not know and to see if you can make that, if that risk will pay off or if it won't? Personally, maybe I think it I'm, shouldn't cost you the whole game if it doesn't. Yeah. Uh, ultimately, with pre measuring, I think it's actually going to help me win a lot more games because I'm going to oh, spend great. a lot less. Now time I'm really on the clock. upset. <laughs> Yeah, spending a lot less time on clock. The I hmm. see I I'll have a, I have a high and a low for pre measuring. The high on yeah. it is there are a lot of times where you're just like, can I measure this at this point in time? Like whether it's reach a command range, like especially as a newer player you're coming into this, can I measure this? But it goes beyond that, like stealth models, Creel stone yeah. auras, things the like stealth this. Model things is kind of, it, it's oh, like when can I like actually measure this? Now you just measure it. Yeah, it's not really yeah. a big deal. So that and I you think can decide if some, if you're going to yeah. take a free strike or something before you commit to moving and stuff. I think it can help promote a cleaner game to where, like, a creel stone I think is a great example where it's like it's nine inches. This I'm assuming is in. Yeah, but maybe like, it's you, not. It's like okay, I have the creel stone. I move it here. I actually can't check anything until you attack me. Yeah, agonizer Shit. is sort of the same same situation. So I, I think it can really help with a lot of that, and it makes some of those tools more powerful. The downside I see to it is, depending on how factions are balanced. So this is kind of a, a weird one to go on because you don't really know how things are if things are going to stay the same or not. But if you have a game where the scenario isn't terribly threatening, and if you have a higher threat range and enough output to remove what they put on the table, you just win. So. Yep you're rewarded for playing high threat range, high output. You can just play a class cannon and win. So Legion. Legion Circle, they fall yeah. into that. There's also the Crix sort of situation where there might take a little bit more skill with that, but it's sort of the same thing where I'm outside of your threat range, so I don't lose all my models to guns. Now I run up and engage you. Well, yeah, it creates And now a, I kill all your shit. Instead of creating a game where you are eyeballing it and abusing stealth ranges and the scenario zones to, to estimate what is what is there and still running the risk of being wrong, now you're just never going to be wrong with it. And it's yep. more like a game of... I mean, not to oversimplify it, but it simplifies it enough where you're like, I choose you, Beast 09, and I know you're going to do this. And There the are end. still dice involved and things like that, but it does, yep. it does but that's make like the, the only one left. It does, make the, it does make the game a bit more of point and shoot, where you're like, now I'm out of your threat range, now I win sort of thing. Yeah. And so that's a question of like, do you want the lesser complexity to that? Is that something you enjoy? And... Overall, I think people are fairly split on it, although it's very loudly coming across, at least to me lately, that people want it. The thing to me, though, that seems really strange is everybody's like, oh, no, it's, we've, we've needed this forever. We've always needed pre-measuring. It's like, I never heard this no. complained about before at all. Yeah. Very, 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 yeah, very interesting, rarely. Interesting sort of change. Uh, what I, I find funny, though, right. is uh, PP was talking about why they suck so much when they play normal games. It's because they uh. always play with pre-measuring. Because yep. they're playtesting models, right? <laughs> and really, it's because we've been playing Mark III, and we pre-measure everything. So they're the only ones that really know if it's a better game or not. And how we judge their skill, I mean, I think most people judge their skill as poor. Like, they are poorly skilled at the game compared to us because we are the mighty gamers, and we are much better than they but uh, well, we're wow. gonna find out what happens yeah, we'll um, June twelfth when when they're playing a bunch of people with the Mark Three rolls. They're like, "This is what yeah. we played." And last we have three years, years experience with yeah. this. Suck it! <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Just uh, everybody I, gets curb stomped. At I'm, 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 I'm being I'm being very sarcastic with that, but that that was the mentality that yeah. these people suck at the game. And as a as a developer of anything, 
like especially if you're developing games or whatever, you're you're always going to have super users and they're always going to be far better than you. That's that's a point in case, but don't call them crap because <laughs> you you think because they're, they're still they're developing the, the game, game you love. So yeah, and yeah. they also might be pretty decent, especially when they do a lot of in-house tournaments. Ah, uh, true. Yeah. There so, goes the pre-measure. Yeah, I think we kind of got through that without anybody like having to scream or yell no, or no one was cry a, or anything. Having bottles broken over their head. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe that's. No. Which Shit, I wish, I'm in the corner. I can't escape. I just wish people weren't going so crazy about it on either side. I know. I'm I'm accepting of it. I'm not thrilled. Whatever. I want to see how I it goes. I think it's good overall. I want to see how it goes. I think as a positive influence, the only thing I'm worried about is that it becomes a game of threat range and output. Yeah. That could be Which not conducive severely, to... Yeah, it's not really conducive to certain factions play styles. Of course, all these things are subject to change. It could lead to a negative play experience. Many, <laughs> many negative play experience. I play this awesome brick that will never die, except it dies. <laughs> <laughs> oh, darn. Why am I so slow? <laughs> <laughs> or you just get pushed out. Yeah, or yeah, or you just get locked out of scenarios, and that's a, that's the same thing that exists currently in the game, though. Which I yeah. uh, they, they have have they talked at all about uh, revamping the scenarios? I thought they breached it no. little, or talked about it a little bit. Um, not really. A, Nothing okay. meaningful on scenarios. I guess we'll. Yeah. It, 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 it's going to come down to we'll see. But we've had the same scenario packet for like a year and a half. Yeah, yeah. It won't which change, so. now with the Mark Three announcement, it makes sense why. Yeah. It definitely don't makes have sense why we don't have it. But well, it made sense before that they'd want to really like it was a believable thing. Like, oh, yeah, we just release it well, with our because it event. was TempleCon that moved, right? Yeah, mm. and that was the previous launching point or whatever for Steamroller. So, I it, and they well, they, those, they want more they, focus on their on their um, yeah. on their event. That's fair. Yeah. So. so I wonder at the announcement of TempleCon changing spots in the year, how many private to press staffers went? Yes, we can use that. <laughs> yeah. We have excuses. <laughs> People will buy it. Um, let's see. What else do we have? Do, 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 do. So, all models will be playable. That's awesome. ADR is still going to exist. Uh, it will be 40 point specialist. So, that's just a straight double of what it is now. Mm. Yeah, which would make uh, sense if you're doubling point costs, roughly doubling point yeah. costs and everything. So. One thing I find interesting with ADR is Masters is going to be two or three list. What? Yeah. Masters two or could be three. three list. Like as in you're only required two list, but you could bring a third? Is that how you're I, interpreting it? or? I don't know. Um, like literally the only thing I have is Masters um, at the discretion of the EO can be two or three list after okay. the OP drops. Yeah. If it's after. If it's up to the EO, then I could see they could make it a three-list event or a two-list event. I think three-list events are not conducive to the game. Um, yeah. Well, with lack of, like, I guess, character restrictions, depending on your uh, faction, you can find yourself. Really there, limited. I mean, there, yeah, yeah there's true. a there's a number of issues. One would be faction that you're playing. Um, Virus the, Ignar. If you're playing hordes in general, you have less casters to choose from. And then if you go down to, into oh, one of the even... 14 now per faction. I mean, bars, it, it is it is a little bit better. I mean, uh, if you look at, like, ret convergence, they are still fairly limited yeah. on casters. And also, three different lists, carrying three lists around. Yeah, right. Not at a, not at a convention. It's a pain in the ass no. to do. Oh, yeah. That, and yeah. have diverse lists. <laughs> It's like even with a double decker carrying tray, you're still having a hard time fitting yeah. all three. Yeah, it's a bit of a pain in the ass, and there there are just some factions that they they can't really do it. It's not really possible. Maybe that changes going into Mark Three though. Who knows? Um, <coughs> bless you. Uh, so, um, so we have official confirmation that. June 12th is going to crash every privateer press server and good luck trying to play the game or update war room or anything like that. Yeah. Uh, um, hope they, they were taking people's emails through that stupid faction quiz. Yeah. And they were going to send you a, um, 
Uh, they're going to send you an email with the updated rules, I think is what it says. But when they're they, who, available. Took, who took that faction quiz? I did. Did it work for you? Yep. Uh, did I didn't even it? know there was a faction quiz. It, it's part of their oh. all-new war website, which was a piece of shit. Their faction yeah. quiz was even more of a piece of shit. It didn't work on most browsers. And yeah, I... Browser, it was a browser, negative browser experience. If you glitched me on Chrome, I had to go to Firefox to actually get yeah. through it. All. Uh, I did it on three different browsers on multiple platforms. Never worked. And um, if you're wondering who sent you all the terrible emails, uh, that was me. <laughs> yeah, like well, we, uh, email well, addresses. Like, them. you guys should learn how to test at dipshit.com. <laughs> Like I, I sent a bunch of terrible wow. things to him because I'm also a developer and I'd be fucking ashamed if my name was attached to that. Like I don't care yeah. if you put that together if your fucking twelve year old son put that together. That's a piece of shit and you should feel bad. Tell us how you really feel. <laughs> I'm, I'm just, when it comes to putting out a product and putting your name on something, you no, should make sure it fucking works. Agree. And they have a terrible track record with anything electronic. Oh yes, they do. Hey, yeah. War Room. Um, we're we're getting better at it, guys. Don't mind our website. It's a piece of shit. Yeah. It crashes all the time. Uh, yeah, our new beta. There's no freaking way that thing's gonna be ready by Mark Three. Yeah. Well, hopefully they will continue to learn. And you're in fucking Seattle. There are a lot of people that you could hire, but you're cheap sons of bitches and won't actually pay anyone. <laughs> <laughs> On that plucky note. Yeah. Uh, the rules are just going to be available for download, I guess, on their website, but maybe they'll have some, uh, the rules some will be clone websites or something. Hopefully <laughs> they send it to you an email so you can just get it from your email. But yeah, the rules okay. will be available June 12th off the website, and War Room will update with all the Mark III cards on June 12th as well. If, you if buy the War Room music. works, and if you pay more money for another fucking deck on War Room. Oh, all the 30 cards are going to be in there. You just have to yeah pay the money to see them. Uh, has there been any, um, has the cost been released on that yet? Because I know there's supposed to be a discount if you already yeah, have it. Yeah, cost has not been released. Um, the significance of the discount has also not been Remember released. when they said you'll never have to buy cards again? Yeah. For Mark II, you would never have to buy cards again? I'm sure they yeah, had that caveat in there. That's what I'm, it was. I'm sure it's they like did. For the current edition. To yeah. be fair, guys, it's like six years. Like, buying cards... One even once every six years. No, coming it, from like any other game, uh, yeah. not too bad. It, it's oh, not it's, bad. I, I think it's fine, but uh, I'm not a fan of their war room system and the way that they took money for something that didn't work, and now they're going to take money again. Yeah, good job. Well, and I was one of the suckers that bought full one. one. The beta? Yeah. It's definitely still a beta. Okay. <laughs> Very yeah, because I just have, they, have they expanded beta. it to Android devices yet? Yeah, it's been on Android okay. for a while. Right, you right. have to sideload it. Because, you know, war, something like War Room is actually a very brilliant idea. I mean, what yeah. a way to keep your player base invested in your game even when they're not playing it. Because you're yeah. looking at stuff. You're it, looking at the reference. It's yeah, definitely well, that, a good idea. That keyword yeah. right there, reference. Mm. Yeah. That's what War Room is good for. Uh, and seeing other people's cards. I mean, I have yeah. all of the well, factions yeah. well, yeah. on there. I mean, just cause it, the fight mechanic was a bit of a problem. I never used it, yeah. ever. Yeah. There you go. Same here. No. Uh, okay. I use... The way I use the fight mechanic is I go, I build my opponent's list in War Room, and then I go to fight because then I just have all the cards a lot easier to look at. Right. I but that's like a lot of preparation that I don't... God, and I like the physical cards, too. Yeah, and God forbid you play Legion or any faction that can add something to their army mid-game. Ooh. Yeah, because they don't really account for that because... Yeah, no. Spawning Vessel. Cool, I have a lesser... Because they don't actually play the game, War the people that developed up. it. Yeah. Yeah. Who would have sunk it? I don't know. <laughs> uh, we can skip their electronic stuff. It's very pitiful. Yeah. And, well, you yeah. can. Well, you can watch Miranda play tactics. It's gotten How's better. Tactics? It's, it, it's better. Yeah. I mean, I started it uh, about two years after launch, admittedly, but they they actually are still improving it, and I don't know. I. I feel bad just like picking on the the developers of White Moon Dreams because I don't think a lot of this is their fault. Um, yeah, kind of one of those a really good actor ending up in a shitty movie because of the director sucks. Uh, or? more like more like when you have a really cool movie coming out and then like the script gets doctored midway, but everybody's already on board. 
So, uh, I mean, I'm, st- I'm still just, and I'm even having fun in tactics, just to be totally fair about it. But I loved that E3 trailer years ago when it looked like just an adventure game where you're running around with a badass oh, warcaster. Uh, yeah, I mean, yeah. That, I mean that, that, that change was actually very, very big. But yeah. uh, that, that was a funding, funding issue. They wanted to see if they could actually do this. Turns out they can't. But <laughs> how do you how do you make a tabletop game where you want to interact with each and every single model? How how do you even do that? On I mean, a they like, they did the being... right thing in trying to just knock something off. They just knock off uh, XCOM, uh, an existing game that is already yeah. successful that could kind of work for their genre. But um, yeah, I, I feel bad for them for well, not really. Uh, I feel bad that they have to host that thing because hosting something like that is expensive and a pain in the ass. Um, but at the same time, you kickstart that fucking game. So eh, they've been growing on it. Yeah. And there's still DLC, and they've been updating it, and it's gotten a lot less buggy. So yeah, uh, I, I mean, did the war chest in the Kickstarter, and I haven't even gone in to try to download or claim all the extra free stuff that I was supposed to get. Yeah, me either. Well, I but, did, so... <laughs> but we'll, we'll just leave that one. We'll yeah. leave. Hey, I found something in Mark III that we haven't talked about yet. What's that? Repair checks. They just work now. Yeah. You just roll, what, a D6, and it's just the amount repaired? Well, or you we just don't roll know if for it's the D6 amount. or not. Okay. Well, it's always we just gonna, know there's all, no more skill check. It's always going to be D6. Which, good. It's nice that uh, you can have I models know, on the board. They only have D6 in the game. Yeah. Are you trying to yeah. say it could be a D3 roll? That's still a D6, um, man. Oh my goodness. Come on. Oh my Come God. on. It's going to be a D6. Freaking guy. <laughs> so probably. No, previously, everything that automatic or er, healing or whatever that automatically happened was a D3. For the most part, I think Craig has a couple exceptions in there. Um, and if it required a skill check, it was D6. Yeah, uh, you're saying if you had to roll for a skill check, oh, it, yeah, was, yeah. it was D6 normally. Yeah. And if it was no Just roll required, then yeah. it was a D3 typically. So it's like, oh, yeah, a D6 when you have units of six guys that can just go and... So we don't know what the Warjacks are even going to... I mean, we don't even know if they're going to have the same amount of hitboxes, if they're going to be hardier, perhaps. So it could make sense to have more repairs then. And maybe you can only pick a column now, or and maybe you can't just fill in every single box. Like They, they probably will make yeah. up for it in some way there. But it is nice to, again, have models on the board that know how to do their job. Like... <laughs> Just yeah. then, yeah, sitting, they can conceivably it. fail every check all game so the and gob- be a waste of points. So the Gobber Tinker is even better at figuring out where the wrench goes on the throne of Everblight. Yes, yes, yes in short. He's effective with that wrench. <laughs> yeah, where? Well, I, I think it. I think it's fine. They they need they need a reason to have these constructs that can be repaired be better. Yes. So that's that's perfectly fine. I think. Agreed. <laughs> Cats are being gay boys. <laughs> and nobody else can see it. Oh, man. Moving on. Moving on. <laughs> and they just whined. Um, wow, Notice they I only really, really do that in front of you, Frank. <laughs> <laughs> they want their picture taken, I guess. <laughs> I guess. Um, I think we've actually gone over most of the you wanna new edition Mark III stuff. Quick. Let's see. Oh, we've we've already covered all the stuff in this thread a while ago. Yeah, I guess um, at the end of the day, we just corollary. Know so much. Who cares? Induction. It's still gonna be good for the convergence players. Yay! Yeah, three is the cap of focus for monstrosities of virtually all warjacks. Oh, it's control range now instead of control area. So I, I guess the the next thing is they're probably going to do three insiders a week. We'll slowly start spoiling this. Yeah. I hope L- that they start showing some then. stats oh, at yes. some point. Like, just show a caster. Even if you don't show their complete stats, show us yeah. a feat, show us a special ability. So um, speaking probably of Probably in the no quarters, I would guess. Yeah. Oh, no quarters maybe, but... No, I... I actually really hope that they give War Jacks, not necessarily War Beast, because especially if they're going to keep the Fury Four or Five thing going, um, but give War Jacks another Mat Rat boost. Because Mark One to yeah. Mark Two, they pretty universally bumped them up plus one Mat Rat. Um, if they do that again, I wouldn't really complain, except for Signar. Screw Signar; those Jacks are already good enough. Well, there's only one chassis in Signar that is Mat Seven Rat Six, I think. 
<clears throat> and yeah. uh, the rest, the ones that are on the Hammersmith chassis, they're like a 6.4, I think, you know, guns, so their rat doesn't really matter. Yeah, that's like but yeah, I, I higher think, than Matt seven on. I think <laughs> higher than Rat right. four would be nice. Yeah, yeah. you need to no, have but then, oh, you I won't know. Him. Yeah, I won't <laughs> yeah, know what he's like him. until Mark three. But again, no, I mean, no. Mark three. Uh, Fuck off, Kador. <laughs> did, did the the Get announcement flicker. of Mark three and this news affect your interest and enthusiasm about this game? One hundred percent. Yup, that was a really good question too. Uh, I don't want to play Mark II anymore, personally. <laughs> You're done. That game where you guys are watching, sorry. He was just, he was checked out. I yeah. mean, the the game's still fine to play, I guess. But it's really tough to play a game when you know it's being Going sunset. To end. Well, it's yeah. hard to theorize, and it's hard to tech anything it re- anymore. It really is. Like, well, well, last video I played on, I made a comment about, all right, my goal is to play Kruger 1 with all the stuff, and... Uh, Mark III announced it comes out. I'm like, all right, crew one, well, back in the, back to collecting dust until Mark III comes out. I am going to play what I know works, what I like, and what is broken as balls until it gets nerfed. I'm just so yeah, Cassius and Kruger two with double croaks for two more months. <laughs> um, I think it's a great change for the game though, because the game was stale as shit. It was yeah, it was getting bad. Um, even even with a few new releases here and there, you wouldn't see the model actually come out for like how long did the grill art take? I don't know. I built my own. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Miranda even resorted <laughs> yeah. to building her own grill art. Fuck your, your kits. Pretty. I don't need your kits. <laughs> I, I own the kit actually now, but I haven't opened it. I just did that to like feel better about the fact that I built my kit. <laughs> Are you gonna make it a Kodiak? <sighs> I don't know. Oh, well, See, I really don't know now. Good, oh, yeah. maybe. I mean, that's a good hey. question. Oh, yeah, you don't like magnetizing. Even better to keep that thing new in box and yeah. two. So I, it'll just it'll just wait. Um, but, yeah, I mean, I'm hoping to see new players come to it. Maybe just people who tried it before, didn't like it, come back and try it again. Or people, I mean, I know we have people in our meta who have walked away waiting for Mark III. There were people yeah. that specifically said, I won't come back till Mark III because this game is fucking horseshit. Yeah. Granted, that's just people tilting. I know. Yeah, I, <laughs> yeah. yeah I, I think it's funny too. It's like, yeah, Mark III is going to come around. People are still going to be hyper competitive. You're still going to have the arguments over millimeters that you I, had. I before. think. You I are. think the it's going to be the same. That thirty percent of the game is going to be hyper competitive. Yeah. And the remaining seventy percent is going to be for funsies, or maybe a special use one trick pony sort of thing. Um, I guess another thing we can touch on is theme forces. Yeah, we I hope they all die in a fire. Whoa. I, I Just because they're good or bad? Or? I think, I, I think I, because right now we are seeing theme forces dominating. Theme forces are dominating way too much. Yeah. They, they have become a, uh, they've become a choice in some factions okay. where it's the only way to play them competitively. Yeah, mm-hmm. I mean, come on. Our, the national meta has come to not only is it just what Warcasters were playing, it's like, no. They're playing Force Wall, Machinations of Shadow, Body and Soul, uh, Runes of War, Ele- What's the Illusionary Rain of Elementalism, Whatever the Rain uh, is. Will of Nine Voices. Yeah. Like, it's Good got- memory, wow. <laughs> I wouldn't have known any of those names. I'm like the one with all the Yeah, I don't angels. remember a series. What's sad is if you have a bad faction, there's probably a tier list that can fix it. Yeah. Which unless is, you don't like Doom Raiders. Yeah, uh, unless you Mad Dogs of War. Raiders. I mean, there there is the Iron Fang tier list, which is also fairly competitive. Yeah, we should probably yeah. assemble those someday. Yeah, I mean, those are a bitch to assemble. So I, I don't know. Really. Yeah, I know. but it's it still, it's like, no, it's not just this Castle One. It's no this specific theme force, and we know the names of all these theme forces now because they're being played. And so there goes all your list creativity. There goes a the majority yeah. of the models that you're not using yeah. because theme force only allows some things. Um, yeah, I hope they die in a fire. I hope they just go away. Uh, I think they I'm said they're going to gonna rework them. them and keep them. That, that's yeah. what, uh, I forget which member of PP said that. They're, yeah, they're gonna, I, I think that falls under the not invalidate purchases because of they well, should make because it of the, FAU on specific... Yeah, it's like I people mean, who yeah. have bought three units of Strike Force, people Six who units have of Shapers. I was going to say. Uh, yeah, Rune Shapers, the Doom Reaver units. Damn. So, I don't know. They Your have e. a really great idea behind them because they are 
incorporating the lore of the game of like the Ulans with Vlad and they're running across the field. Whatever. Okay, this shut up, Frank. Anyway. Like it should be it should be fine for for people who wanna play almost like in character in their games because you like yeah, that uh, I, I think that's fine as well. Like honestly that's perfectly fine. And as a I know as a new player, which actually they're doing this in their little quick start guide that they get. Yep. When you approach the game, what's the first question a new player says when they have their battle box, right? What should I buy next? What should I buy next? Exactly. So many people turn to theme forces. Well, in their little quick start book, they recommend some things that you could add to your army, which I think is good. Yeah. That's definitely a good start. It's just a question of what are the recommendations? What are the recommendations? Hey, How good are Kato, they? Here's we course. recommend Man of Wars. But if you well, so many people would just follow those theme forces blindly anyway, right? Yeah. So some of them would just be like, hey, you made a great choice, or hey, oh, you I made feel a bad terrible, for terrible decision. I feel bad for anybody who A, played Grail, and then B, bought his theme force. And I'm not a fan of the theme force where they have you buy these things that exceed FA. Well, yeah. That, you can that, only that play creates in the boring one list. lists. Yeah, it creates boring lists. It creates spam lists. Kind of happy I don't have a third unit of Sentry Stones right now. Yeah. There's. Yeah, I, I hope they just make them terrible. Yeah. I, for something, competitive play. Something I've seen somebody else point out that I'd actually be okay with is um, whether. Like for Iron Gauntlet or Masters, like one of the higher or Masters at least, ban them in that one. Keep them around, but ban them in like the top competitive play. Um, preferably Masters because Iron Gauntlet hasn't been that great for the past. Iron Gauntlet's the one that they actually like, though. Well, they're also pushing the new one, Champions, which is replacing Hardcore. Yeah, which is ADR only. Mm -hmm. That that should be interesting. I mean, that that could be a good format. Um, yeah. The current Iron Gauntlet format is just terrible. It's it play is. a normal three list tournament unless you make it to the final round. And then round. clock your opponent in the Gauntlet rounds. Yeah, yeah, I mean, that's exactly what it comes down to. Let's play a spam list in the last and four rounds. And yeah. Um, but it's like, no, if you if you ban Theme Forces in Masters, think about it. ADR only exists in Masters. Most people just want to play that anyways. So if you ban it in that one format, most people are going to play that format regardless. So it'll be almost as effective as banning them, whereas people who do want to play the casual game still have access to them. And and, I mean, speaking of bans, um, we'll put this to both of you, I'm sure you'll both like this idea. Uh -oh. uh, one of my favorite proposals for the formats, there are some players that are not terribly happy with the way they've been going in their competitive route, and uh, one player that I've talked to came up with a great one, uh, Jason Flanzer. <laughs> it was you do a three or four list environment, so a multi-list environment, and your opponent gets to ban one of your lists, and you get to ban one of their lists. Does that make for a much better competitive environment? I'm not they? happy with Flanzer right now. Uh, so maybe, <laughs> this is an old idea. It, it old creates idea. just another meta game. It does. And yeah. so you just you build the list that you know is going to get banned. So. I mean, that, that very well could be what it falls into. No, but it, Flanzer's I, trying I'm to bring not, back Mangle Metal, metal too, things. so... Yeah, sure. <laughs> Um, I should check the timestamps on this other one. Kickstarter bullshit. Um, still has not gotten in. The uh, Widowmakers would? No um, their tokens. Oh. Oh, Broken Egg. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, if you go yeah. to the conventions, oh, you can talk to them. <laughs> I did. It didn't help. Uh -huh. Yeah. Yeah. Um. No, the the thought of okay, your opponent banning one of your lists that that actually is a somewhat interesting. Uh, I like that. Um, I mean, Miranda of course has a point where they'll just if it's a three list environment, they're just gonna make a list that you ban out. But every list has its silver bullet, so you yeah. might let some things through, you might let some things slide. I don't know. They need to do something different than the multi faction thing they tried the first time. That was okay. Was, yeah. Uh, obviously, there were a lot of complaints with it. And then this gauntlet rounds of 75 points, I, I don't think that's a fun game. Playing 75 no. points under just one more caster sounds awful. Yeah, hey, 75's the new 50. Yeah, yeah so it's going well, to be a 150 oh, point game, a 100 know, point game, yeah. like what is it going to be? Yeah, It'd be nice if they could address like the um, unbound stuff again to make that uh, more, you know, played at all. Play, yeah, played at all. 
People are like, I played Unbound or... 10 hours later. I hated <laughs> exactly. my life. <laughs> exactly. And the game is negative still going. Negative play experience. Yeah, negative play experience. It's all over the place. So how can they eliminate negative play experience? That's all they've been trying to do, really, with negative erratas and now you, with you, Mark You 3. want to eliminate negative play experience? Don't play. Yeah. Just flat out don't play. I think that's probably the best solution. I, yes, they are simplifying the game. Uh, Pre-measuring is going to make it easier for newer players. Guess what? There are still over 150 I, I, yeah, there's going to be over, warcasters at Mark III. There's going to be over 160, mm -hmm. uh, 100, 159 right now. 159 right now. Yeah, so over 170 different warcasters and warlocks in the game. Yeah, one of them's going to have a dick punch feet that you're going to go home and cry yeah. about. Well, oh, I mean, and that's the thing. What, so, yeah, what are negative play experiences for new um, players? It's the assassination run. It's the feet. It's yeah. the way that somebody got to you in a way that you well, could I mean, not account for. I think we still have negative play experiences too, right? Like Kruger double croaks. <laughs> <laughs> well, and you do because I'll out say it, uh, well, because you bring out the list that um, is specifically designed to well, uh, hard to, counters definitely. Yeah. yeah. No lists, I think, are negative play experiences for a lot of people. Heart denial feats, like yeah, what Halo heart, 2's yeah. was for a long time. Yeah, mm -hmm. It was a horrible... I mean, it's still it's still oh, fairly yeah. negative. <laughs> <laughs> Especially when Anastasia Debray um, comes up. But. but On that note, just about any control feat. Denegra 2, Denegra 1, Kruger 2, um, well, Axis. Right. And so it's kind of just built into the game that is War Machine. It's just... Yeah. It's very. It's a game of sledgehammers. You you don't really like finesse a whole lot. You you kind of create your mouse trap effect and then you go at it. Yeah. And, and then you, you drop the hammer on them. Yeah, you, yeah, and it either works or you you die the next turn. Like it, it doesn't really yeah. go and out like a long long drawn out war yeah. game. And again, it's one of those God knows how many war beasts, war jacks, units, solos, and everything else that exists inside this game. You are n you're still not going to know everything. Your opponent is still going to you're still going to get hit with gotchas. It's like, "Oh, I didn't see that synergy. Oh, I had no idea what that unit does." And Especially with new rule set, everyone's going to yeah. get hit by gotchas, and I'm sure we will see that forum like the forums are just going to light up. Oh with my gosh. Yeah, over 180 all their native units like, in the game currently. So, yeah. I, I really oh, hope somebody that, actually uh, has a count. That's amazing. Yeah. Wait, only 181? 181 units. Without overlap, yeah. Wow. I do hope that they don't put out any erratas or any model changes for at least two years. I doubt that. We have the community have no has grown. Faith. You think they're gonna fuck up? Well, the community has grown. The they want new players, the and they've only had internal playtesting for this, right? Yep. Yeah, that scares me the most. And no, they they looked at your steamroller sheets that you filled out. So they know exactly how the game's being played. I know that they they watch some games at some. Events. Yeah, that, that was all the external play testing, the tournament report. Yeah. You've been helping us with those steamroller sheets you're sending. That's how yeah. that's how we're balancing the game, right? Yeah. So I mean, I understand what you're trying to say, PP. You're trying to say we looked at the results of all the steamrollers. We watched people play in competitive play, but that's a terrible answer. Like that's a really terrible really answer. Is. When you think about what they just said, you're like. Okay, you looked at some numbers and you crunched the numbers, and that's how you're gonna balance the game. Okay, like so many things can happen in a game, and I, I don't know. Well, but in that end, at the end of the day, though, on that we'll just we'll see. Because I mean, so far people are very excited about it, and I think people are gonna remain excited about it even when it hits. It'll be a while before they find things to really. Yeah. Be well, I, I think things are gonna be incredibly busted for six months. Then there'll be counters that are found. And then it'll just kind of evolve and go from there because there will be so many different and new models. So unless they really oh, yeah. just homogenize the game and then some things are obviously better than others, it's going to take a long time. That's why they hope they don't change anything well, for two years. There's so many options. You can't get... Oh, you can't make everything perfectly homogenized. Things are going to be and they, and they shouldn't. Others. They shouldn't make things homogenized. No, oh, God, no. Then yeah. we just might as well play actual chess. <laughs> Yeah, no, exactly. <laughs> we would be playing checkers. Yeah. Checkers um, with dice. Checkers with choose? dice. I don't know. Actually, I have a sixty percent chance of kinging. We can we can play that on the. <laughs> let's play that on the next game. We'll play. Uh, oh my checkers god. Checkers with dice. <laughs> Welcome to Mark Three. So, Welcome to Mark Three. Let's see how this goes. 
I, I really hope not, because abstract thought is the, one of the best elements of wargaming in general. It is the oh, yeah. just to, to take a look at the rules and in your own way come up with how you're going to defeat your opponent. And it's, in that regard, I think it's far superior to chess, which is just a game of memory. And I do not like it, how much memory is required for this game, because my memory sucks. And so it's just a weak point for me. And so abstract thought is kind of where you make up for it, or just lucky dice, which is chaos, or randomness. So, Of the three elements, let's hope that it's, it's nicely nestled in the middle. Yeah. We didn't have random dice. <laughs> dice are random, Ben. Yes, but there is a definite curve. There is no curve. <laughs> There's never been a curve in the play experience here. Uh, also, okay. we should remove dice and go to deck games, so we'll just all have it. Because uh, yeah. negative play experience for the dice. Well, I mean, and that's just how many podcasts have there been of like, what tilts you in a game? Dice. dice. <laughs> uh, Why do you think I actually started counting? Yeah, well, for, for the dice mechanic, do you think they'll try and get rid of 1d6 dice rolls? And no. this, this really, this really comes down to tough well. checks. Yeah. Uh, tough checks? God, I don't know. I, I mean, yeah, repair right. check, the, or, uh, sorry, uh, the, anytime you had the 1d3 rolls, 1d6 rolls, and yeah. then, of course, tough checks. Um, tough checks being the most prominent, but there were other rolls. Like, oh, like they straight, can be very, auto fire. Yeah, they can so be very like, Okay, how much output I have is going to be determined by this one. Yeah, your your yeah. D three damage or D three attacks is like okay. Well, yeah. it's like the continuous effect that fire is not going out. Yeah, fire is is fire going to stay or go? Yeah. I mean, those or, all can be very challenging things when it comes to how well or poorly your dice are doing, yeah. or you perceive your dice to be doing. Yeah, in addition I, to being I, a lot to keep track of. Yeah, I do hope they do something with tough. Um, they better do something different with water, by the way. Just thinking of rules that need If you want a lot more warjacks on the table, I would oh. hate to see water. Well, that's no, not sure. just that. We, we were talking about uh, terrain in general, actually. Right? Yeah. With maybe uh, destruction of linear obstacles. And, of course, yes, they, they need to change water cool. rules. That way Amphibious isn't just ghetto Pathfinder. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> just make the movement penalties for shallow water where the exact same as deep. You suffer... For one inch of movement, you move a half inch. Just flat out. It's not rough terrain. Remove that chunk out of it. Also, screw Earthborn Dire Trolls. But remove Don't let that your boiler out go out. That way, Pathfinder doesn't ignore shallow water. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. They should probably get rid of the boiler thing, because that's like a thematic thing. But yeah. Come on. I understand they it's thematic, They should have come up with some cool. way to negate water at this point. Yeah, yeah like they put well, a I mean, trash never, bag over it. And again, so deep water. It's like, hey, my colossal touched this... And it's gone of deep water. Water. That is not negative play experience. Gone. Whereas a war beast goes in there, it's like, ow, I take a point. Yay! Well, yeah, and so war beasts just have, they're just superior on on a, on a board with with water because your war jacks, you just have to like give it a real wide skirt because you could get slammed into it. And reactivating war jacks is clunky as heck too. Yeah. So it would be nice to see that adjusted. Or removed. Or removed. Removed. Hey, that's a good way to simplify the game. They just go autonomous. That's, that's fine a, with me. That's a great way to simplify the game, I think. Yeah. But, yeah, I, terrain rules maybe could change a bit. That would be nice. Make obstructions actually worth attacking. Yeah, to destroy obstructions. Yeah, I, I think know. linear yeah. obstacles are a negative play experience. <laughs> so, we can just ditch those. Well, it be ruins a war player. I I've always thought it'd be really Should cool. Should your fire burn the trees down? Well, no, go. no, no! <laughs> oh god, a that'd whole be crazy. Feet just it's just like this down. war ravaged like playmat. By the time you're done, that would actually be really cool. Just like putting markers oh, on your forest. Do, do you guys remember that league recently? I think it was no, actually I don't, I don't this actually year. Play that league oh, okay. Shit, no, there there was one league where you could actually attack forests and blow them up, and it would be a bunch of shattered trees. And Testing stuff for Mark like Three. Yeah, yeah, probably. So that's was. what's gonna happen now. Confirmed. Like Cassius's forest. I'm sitting there going, "You can destroy forests." Cassius's feet. Shit. Huh. All my stuff dies. You <laughs> I just like blew this up idea. This See, it's oh. a great idea. You should have you evaporate water as well. Right? <laughs> <laughs> Fuck yeah. your puddle. I mean, if that's a small puddle. Why can't we evaporate this? <laughs> 
<laughs> Trolls is suddenly takes a takes a template of shallow water, makes it too. Just great. just terrain interaction that isn't people wanting to play on parking lots. I mean, that's what it always ends up becoming. You don't, you don't want more than five or six pieces of terrain, and nothing can touch, you know, restricted yeah. terrain versus yeah. unrestricted terrain. That, that stuff flows down the game a lot, but they also yeah. add a lot. It could also be very interesting if you could destroy linear obstacles, if you could interact with a forest in a different way, yeah, do something about Cassius's yeah. feet. Well, if know. you could destroy a forest no. so their caster can't just hide behind it the entire game, I exactly. mean, that's great. Yeah. And they say they do that with Killbox, but it would be nice if it wasn't, again, just pushing you into that scrum in the middle. Like, Add add elements to the game where you have to like get a certain model to to a to a, an objective by his turn whatever to change I, something I in the game I think that's uh, I think that's one thing that Malifaux did incredibly well that yeah. uh, War Machine could probably take note of is the different wind conditions. Right now, our wind yeah. conditions are kill a caster, clock our opponent, or win on scenario. Yeah, but the, which the, devolves the, into our opponent. Yeah. Well, it becomes but don't a meta go game as again. far as Malifo though either, because Malifo can also become a game of. Hi, hi. Yeah. Ne ne and they're just both going to yeah. do their objective thing. Never, and yeah, cares never about. actually attack each other. Because yeah. why would you do that? Yeah. Definitely. It's tough to balance the game though. So. Yeah. It is. I mean, well done to Privateer Press for having such a well-balanced game for six years before having to change editions. I mean, holy crap. And hopefully the new edition is keeping in spirit with that. And we yep. don't see Age of Sigmar or anything like that. <laughs> I don't think we're running too much risk of that. I just, I do wonder how much simplification will really be drawing yeah. new players versus how much memorization will still be needed. Yeah. I mean, my biggest concerns are how they said they simplifying it and the all in-house play testing because this this is going to be the same group that gave us Brenos Bradigus <laughs> yep Bradigus theme force gave we'll us say. Bradigus uh, Morvana 2 body and soul okay. Evol uh, yeah EE -E is a no quarter theme e -E that no came quarter. out in this um, that was just testing then there was a master plan behind it all <laughs> they gave force wall and they just changed it just to make sure. Hail Hydra. That, yeah. Yeah. Man. It was, People must think the Albuquerque meta is full of like, the most bitter people <laughs> like, ever. I'm sorry, guys. If you're, so, we're not cynical, all. We could say cynical. And yep. I think it just comes with uh, when you play a game for a really long time, you become incredibly critical. Because you do. You do, see, you do see things that happen that are, what the fuck were you thinking? And this isn't in the spirit of the game, of where the game was at one point, right? I no, think, it can be very frustrating. Yeah. You get invested in what is going on. And uh, and know. then suddenly you find out the whole world is going to flip upside down. You're going, what am I going to do? <laughs> well, maybe, right? And you just hope yeah. that it's a, it's a solid direction. And yeah. for the most part, I, I do think they are trying. No, and Certainly more bottom than line, yeah. I'm going to keep playing the game. Yeah, I, mean, I I hope Frank does if he doesn't feel too. I'm selling off all my factions. <laughs> yeah. selling. That's actually not a false statement. No, nope. but uh, for a different my retribution reason. selling is currently on hold just to see what happens. And I will on continue that? to play Kador no. forever. Is selling all Kador off. Yeah. She's yeah. going to start playing um, Convergence. Well, you we could have said Cephalix. That would okay. have been awful. So, uh, we could have gotten worse with Cephalix. All right. She's going to play the Cephalix. She loves the monstrosities. I I've got the... Oh, gosh. I still have the um, all-in-one box upstairs. <laughs> Just unpainted, untouched? He wanted untouched. to play Body and Soul, and then he's like, oh, God, they nerfed it. They nerfed it before You've invalidated my purchase. <laughs> Negative play experience. Negative man. purchase experience. There you go. Negative purchase oh, experience. Oh, yeah. Uh... We, did we talk about Free Rider? No, we have not talked to... Oh, oh shit. Man. We're almost an hour and a half in. Yeah, well, there's your... We can talk about Free Rider. There's, your, there's why Free Rider happened. Yeah. Maybe. Or well, why we, Free Rider know. was tied. So, was. there's ups and downs to it, right? So, it's more expensive for everyone. It, it is more well, expensive. Well, everyone that was buying online. Also. Yeah. Which um, I'm okay with. Yeah, I mean, to, as, as it's pretty accurately argued, you're playing like a luxury 
like board gaming is a luxury item. It's a luxury like hobby, as it were. Yeah. yeah. And it's not like you don't White have the privilege. option of buying stuff off of <laughs> off of eBay or something used models. <laughs> and local game stores do need support as long as like your local game store can get stuff in. Well, um, as long as your local game store will get stuff in, which, which maybe we've, this had, will we've had issues with we at have. multiple. There, there is a reason. There is a Typhon on the shelves at one of our game stores. Huh. Mm. Wow. Typhon of all time. After two weeks, I decided to order it online because I was tired of getting the BS runaround that they were wow. giving me. Yeah. I and mean, then two weeks after that, they finally got it in. I went, I already got it. Just put on the shelf. I, I think care. one of the bigger issues with the, the free rider like statement that was issued was how vague it was. Because vague and they they said some things that they didn't really consider exactly what they were saying like um, contributing to the community and all that sort yeah. of stuff on top of that I don't think they actually needed to make that near as public as they needed to yeah they probably should have kept that under wraps and I just press left statement it up to sure but just as widely pronounced as they made it may have been a bit of an error I mean, other but but then when it goes out and if it if it did start spreading out, that would, would leave be it like, up oh, to you're higher. That really would leave it up to a distributor to say, hey, yeah. they told us we cannot offer this level of discount any longer. Yeah, because like bottom line, what do we what in that free rider policy actually affects us that we actually need to know about and need to care about? I mean, true. we just see prices we just go see the up, prices and, and, then and actually we didn't even learn through them what their price hike was going to be. Yeah. We learned it through one of the people that contributes to the community. <laughs> one of the biggest contributors to the community, yeah. Yeah. sponsoring all kinds of podcasts, including one of their own, and, and providing and a bunch of tournament results, and apparently they don't contribute anything. Which, again, it's it's vague. They say if yeah. it's, if yeah. it's too, too deeply discounted, whatever that means, and they might make exceptions. I just... It, it leaves too much room for extra, uh, well, for speculation. I'm glad they didn't leave any exceptions because it would look bad if they did. But, I mean, you don't also know true, if there's yeah. going to be. Well, I mean, because two of the biggest ones got hit, which would yeah. be Miniature Market and DGI, you assume, okay, there isn't going to yeah. be any exceptions. 10% yeah. discounts the minimum. The okay. problem I have with it is it's price fixing. Mm -hmm. You're not allowing someone to say, I'm going to take less of a profit margin and have higher volume. Which goes against like the American way, so I'm not a fan yeah. of that. But, but uh, the flip other side companies is from, have done it. From what I could read of it, it's not actually just straight up saying you can't sell our stuff at a discount. It's just saying if you we're do, gonna fuck over the gonna... distributors. But there's like four or five distributors in the U.S. Yeah, I know. yeah. There's not so, a lot. Like, and they're one, not of one guy is gonna fuck over everyone. Yeah, right, it's like. Like miniature market coming out and saying that they wouldn't, and basically it's like, okay, they use Alliance, and Alliance is going to look at that and well, go. Ah! I guess miniature market has now. Uh, yeah, they how have. Does they they have. have now raised their prices, hmm. which you have to rely on them to do it in good faith because Private Press has no enforcement policy. No, they really don't. Because again, Alliance, they don't care. I mean, they distribute for a lot more yeah, than just yeah. They distribute for most game stores at least on the west coast yeah they do i mean they're one of the biggest if not the biggest but yeah i mean on the one hand i appreciate the idea that you're trying to encourage going to your local game store to order it it's yes. just for for when you do have problems getting stuff locally it does um it, it can create issues and I, obviously like with respect to the capitalist side of like, no, you should be able to take a lesser profit if you want because you're trying to build your market up. You just also run the risk of like mercantilism where it's like, oh, I'll just lower it until everyone else is out of business, yeah. then I'll go up. Yeah, but, but you know what, flip side, yeah. the announcement comes out and really good timing for stores to start placing their orders for all the stuff that's gonna come out when Mark III drops. Well, yeah, I mean, the coincidence? <laughs> the thing is, if you it's are getting into a, if whatever. you are getting into a new faction, if your store doesn't carry the line, you're you're gonna have to go online. Yeah. They're, so you're paying the same price more or less anyway. Well, what, what I, they what they've done if, so far is they've said that now I have to pay more money if I want to buy a yeah. new faction. Yeah. Or so. if you're in an area that doesn't have a local game store close to you. Or if you just have a tiny meta or a tiny game store or whatever. I mean, it'd be cool to see more game stores having programs where they do offer, like, 
a 10% discount or something on the product if you order with them frequently. I mean, but that also means that, again, the biggest problem we have here in Albuquerque is that game stores actually ordering stuff. Uh, well, they might order. They might not always get it. I mean, the distributors yeah, some, can. Sometimes it's yeah, distributor issues. Sometimes, sometimes it's, it's their issue. I mean, one thing to keep in mind with the way these distributors work a lot of time is they they force you to order a certain number either to receive an order from them, uh, a certain dollar amount, or they'll say, we're going to charge you shipping until you reach this dollar amount. So it's in the store's best interest to reach that dollar amount, then place the order because yeah, they're going to save $50 on shipping or whatever. Yeah. So yeah. That, that was a huge issue with one of the stores that we had here that is no longer in business. And that's a huge store or a huge issue with one of the stores that we still have here in business. So they don't make orders until they have a certain dollar amount. Yeah. Now, bigger game stores and like just bigger yeah. metas probably aren't really yeah. experiencing bigger, that issue. Bigger game stores, they don't have that issue because they likely go with one or two distributors and they likely make monthly orders anyway. So yeah. it's yeah. not like you're doing this weird oddball order because someone decided they finally wanted to buy something. <laughs> I know. Uh. Indeed. So. Well, that's all. How'd our game go, Miranda? I don't know. It finished a long time. I had a ago. negative play experience. I played. <laughs> I played Ron, and I had a negative play experience because I failed a command check. You failed a command check. It was bad. We failed command checks, rolling double sixes. Uh, I failed oh. some die rolls. Yeah. That was really negative. I think. I, I felt it was negative. Did I don't think anybody should have to. Rolls? I don't think anybody should have to fail die rolls. I think that's really exclusionary. So we all. We always. <laughs> Oh, oh I, am even, <laughs> I am actually going to have to full on listen to this game, aren't you I? You are. You're going to have to hear because there were many exclusionary tactics that were being put out. And you should hear how oh exclusionary Miranda is. We were being fantastically she petty. Was, she was ragging on paint jobs. And, <laughs> yeah, and okay. That was terrible. So what I'm hearing is I'm going to have no shortage of little quips to put at the end of this. You, you can probably even find something to put in between. <laughs> <laughs> Just interject. <laughs> You know, it. Uh, as long as it doesn't get as bad as last week's. Oh, no, no, it was nowhere near as bad as that. At least we're a bit more sober. Well, we we had to be on our best behavior, so we do not insult the female in the room. So. Oh, wow. <laughs> Nothing exclusionary about that. There's the exclusionary comment. <laughs> <laughs> oh, wow. Okay, so... With that, uh, hope you guys enjoyed. Like, subscribe. Um, as far as the future of this channel with regards to Mark III, as soon as we can, this channel is going to start doing Mark III battle reports. In the meantime, Ben will give you a lovely series of gifts to keep you entertained. <laughs> we will give you continual drunken ramblings. How about that? Table flipping gifts. Table flipping gifts. Table yep. flipping gifts. Yes, we should do that. That would be fun. Just the that's the entire game. You just see slow yeah. motion table you, flips. You, you're gonna hear kind of like this commentary. We're gonna ramble about all kinds of stuff, and it's just gonna be one simple thing looping over and over and over. And that's just how you'll continue having something to talk about. Yep, yep. Because hey, if Mark II's dying, I'm gonna be playing broken crap. And hopefully, all that broken crap dies in a fire. <laughs> Cassius can die in his own forest fire. <laughs> gonna burn the forest down on him. With it. <laughs> throw Kruger in there. Um, they already tried that once. We'll throw the stalkers in there. Yeah, Menoth already tried burning Kruger. It didn't work. Okay. Okay. All right. Well, again, like, subscribe. We'll see you guys next week. Bye. Is this a negative play experience? It's very negative because of my dice rolls. See? Pre measuring has nothing to do with it. Negative play experience. Other players have more stuff than me. It's gonna deviate. Oh! Tagging my mom.